Welcome back to video three of the series where we're taking a look at basic UVing techniques. Previously I'd created a planar projection of both the front and back face and we examined how the faces themselves were flipped. What I want to do now is I want to separate out these two faces so I can flip the rear side correctly. To do this I can just click in a free area in the viewport which will release the projector from the UV text editor. In the UV text editor, I'll hold down right click with my mouse and I'm going to choose UV from the marking menu. Then I will select a single UV by clicking. Do not drag over a selection of UVs as you'll end up selecting a UV on the front and a UV on the back. That will defeat the whole purpose of what we're about to do. So I will just click on a UV and so you can see where I'm at, I'm going to choose the move tool. To select all of the UVs that are connected to this UV, there's a command called select, select shell. That will allow me to select all four of the UVs on this shell once I've clicked on one. With the move tool, hotkey W, I can just move this shell aside and now you see I have a blue face for the front and a red face for the back. This red face needs to be flipped currently the text is backwards. Therefore this shell needs to be flipped horizontally. This yellow dotted icon in the UV text editor is called flip selected UVs in the U direction. You can also use polygons, flip, options, horizontal, which will flip your shell making it appear both blue in the UV text editor and making your texture show up the correct direction in the viewport. That creates two faces. Now on to a few more. I'm going to go back into the face component mode in the viewport and I'm going to select all of the faces that are either on the left or the right side of this shape. These faces represent the x-axis as seen by the compass in the lower left corner. Here I'm going to go to create UVs, planar mapping, options box, and since these represent the x-axis I'm now going to project from the x-axis. I choose project and I have two new shells. I'm going to repeat the same actions as I did before moving these shells to the side, selecting one UV, going to select shell, moving this over, taking one side and flipping. Exactly the same as before. Finally I'm going to select the face that represents the bottom and I'm going to create its UVs with a planar map in the options box this face represents the y-axis, so I'm going to switch my project from to be the y-axis, and I will choose project. Here is that face. You can see it as well is backwards, and if I look at its arrangement, this face is actually upside down. So instead of flip horizontally, I'm going to choose flip vertically, or flip UVs in the V direction. That is the other of the yellow icons. So now I have all of my faces represented, I just have to sew them back up. Well, looking at the ways in which they're sewn up and noting that this is the torso, you can see that my torso shape is connected to the bottom, sides, all together through the front. A very clever way of getting to this and figuring out exactly how to connect this is this is the front face. I can select it in the viewport and I can see it selected here in the UV text editor. Once I notify or figure out what it is, I can kind of see my arrangement. And since I notice that this front face, the front of the body, needs to be connected to the bottom and two sides, I'm going to select the edge that connects it to the bottom. Hold down shift and select the edge that connects it to the side and the other side. Essentially three of these edges. And I'm going to choose this option in the UV texture editor. It looks like a little move tool. It's called move and sew the selected edges. You can also find it under polygons move and sew edges. Doing so creates a border sewing all of this up. Now you notice this arrangement is upside down from what I have here. So since I decided to pack my shells upside down in the final texture, I'm going to, in the UV texture editor, drag a selection 
over all of my UVs. I'm in the UV component mode, and I'm just dragging a selection. I can use these two icons, which looks like recycling logos. They will rotate your UVs every 45 degrees. I'm going to turn on my background texture here, and let's examine what's going on in this space. You can now see, if I scale this down a bit so we can see it all on the screen at once, you can now see that here's my bottom, here's my front, here's a side, and here's a side, just like we have represented here. I just need to show on my back. By orienting these correctly first, it's very easy to tell by choosing edge in the edge component mode that if I select this edge, it's going to match up with this edge for the back. I can just choose move and sew, and all of a sudden I've got an arrangement which is very similar to what you see here in the 0 to 1 space. I'm going to take these shapes, grab the scale tool, scale them down, and then use the move tool to position them into the 0 to 1 space. Once I have this at roughly the correct scale, I can take my UVs and I can start to grid them out to fit my texture. Now you'll notice that several of these UVs are kind of wobbly. There are several arrows in the middle of the top bar of the UV texture editor with three little dots along them. These options are such as align selected UVs to minimum U value or maximum U value, the minimum V value or maximum V value. These options can also be found under polygons, align options, minimum, maximum, minimum, maximum U and V. Well, I'm just going to hit align them up. And in this case, I'll align them up. Maybe I'll take all of these and align them to the right. And maybe I'll align these to the left. It's kind of arbitrary, but your whole goal is to just make sure that these are all um, very straight lines. Just because my texture is straight and because my model is straight. If my UVs don't represent straight lines, then I'm going to have a break in the representation stream and my texture is going to come out distorted. So once I align these, which I can do just by selecting multiple edges and aligning them in directions, I'll then just move these onto my grid and my texture will be established for this piece. So there we go. Now that I've put these on, you can see how this is established. I'll turn off Isolate Select, and I will take this object, which is here in the object mode, add it to my already UV layer by right-clicking on that layer called UV'd Already, and choosing Add Selected Objects. And now you can see my character coming together. In the next video, we're going to take a look at a method called automatic mapping as a way to very quickly create UVs for very simple objects. I'm going to automatic map one arm, sew it together, and then I'm going to use an operation called transfer maps to transfer the UVs from one arm to the other. Since they're both duplicates of each other, they're both very similar objects, I don't have to UV unwrap things twice. I can UV unwrap one and I can transfer it to the other. That's what video 4 will look at, so please stay tuned.